Hello, and welcome to today's presentation of Reimagining Description for Libraries, Archives, and Special Collections, an Anti-Racist Approach. I am Mary Sauer Games, Vice President of OCLC's Global Product Management Team, and I will be co-presenting with Marilee Prophet, Senior Manager, OCLC Research. Marilee and I would like to begin with a land acknowledgement for our virtual gathering. This presents a challenge as we are all in different places and the technology we use similarly flows over and across a multitude of landscapes. We all express gratitude towards those who were here before us and seek to learn more in paying respects to and honoring these people. And we invite you to join us in reflection, knowledge seeking and appreciation. I personally would like to acknowledge the Potawatomi people, the traditional custodians of the land on which I'm physically presenting from today, and pay my respects to their elders, past and present. Trevor Dawes, Vice Provost for Libraries at the University of Delaware, as well as ACRL leader, put this beautifully. How do we create the sorts of spaces in our libraries and in our institutions where everyone not only is valued and respected, but where they also feel valued and respected? This is a really important concept. We state that we value and respect everyone that enters our libraries, but do they really feel this? Do we really treat everyone like they are a valued and respected part of our community? Do we provide the services that make people feel welcomed and that they belong in our libraries? What is their experience? Many of you may have seen the 2019 documentary, Change the Subject. Through the eyes of these students at Dartmouth, we can see that as libraries, we are not living up to the goals that we have set for ourselves. We have not created a place where all people feel valued and respected. Through their experience with their library, we can quickly recognize that our descriptive practices and systems get in the way of our goals and objectives in providing inclusive spaces. Subject analysis, classification, authority control, and cataloging practices are all part of our naming and labeling processes in bibliographic description. And we have been using obsolete or racist terminology for decades. This terminology can and does undermine the success of our community members and our libraries. These inaccurate and biased descriptions mischaracterize the experiences, memories, and achievements of entire communities and render those communities completely invisible. Our words matter and respectful and inclusive description is critical to ensure information seekers can successfully find the information they need. But addressing the systemic issues in bibliographic description is not simple or easy. We recognize that these are complex issues and will take time and careful listening to fully understand the many facets of the issues at play. We also recognize that involving the communities that are the objects of these descriptions is a critical component and will be a different way of working for many of us. With that said, I would now like to transition to my colleague, Marilee Prophet. Marilee works in OCLC research and provides project management skills and expert support to institutions within the OCLC Research Library Partnership. She'll be sharing some of the work we've been doing at OCLC to better understand this problem space. Marilee? Thank you, Mary. I want to start with this February OCLC Next blog post in which Pilar Martinez, Chief Executive Officer, Edmonton Public Library, and OCLC Global Council Chair, summarizes discussions held by OCLC Global Council on racial and social justice. She suggests as a starting point, education, promotion, questioning, and informing. This is a great framework for what I'd like to share with you today, how OCLC staff have been informing ourselves by learning in depth about these topics, questioning our practices, 
and promoting what we have learned so that others can learn as well. Many of us had our eyes and ears open by this talk given to OCLC staff and members in 2017 by Dr. Kimberly Christian. We have never been neutral. Search, discovery, and the politics of access. I know that for me, this was a pivotal moment and I started to question the way that I had done my work. There's a discussion guide along with the recording, so watch and reflect on her powerful message for yourself. In the OCLC Research Library Partnership, we have a practice of learning together. We listen for issues that form a shared challenge space within our global partnership. And what we are hearing is that describing collections in a respectful and inclusive way has been a challenge. We've seen this in webinars we've organized from institutions like the University of Minnesota, the University of Manitoba, University of Toronto, and Louisiana State University, among others. We also saw this reflected in a survey we did in 2017 across members of the OCLC RLP on equity, diversity, and inclusion efforts. Although institutions have had active efforts in many different EDI areas, they struggle to find traction in that very same area, describing collections in a respectful and inclusive way. This explains why the webinars we've done on these topics have been so popular and why so many people have viewed the recordings and slides of these sessions. People are hungry for tools and models to advance their own work. We also begin to adjust our own practices and approaches to research. These two position papers, one focused on archives and special collections in 2017, and the other looking at data science, machine learning, and artificial intelligence in libraries in 2020. Both were built using a more consultative and community-based approach than we had previously engaged in. And as you can see in some of the outtakes from these community agendas, there is a clear call for including the voices of those who may have been previously excluded due to existing structures of power. We need to re-examine our practices from the ground up in order to truly include all voices. And now I'd like to share some very recent research that I've done along with others on respectful and inclusive descriptive practices of indigenous people. But first, some words of acknowledgement. I come to this work as a settler. I occupy land that is the traditional unceded territory of the Chichenyawalani people, and I am grateful to the ancestors and present day leaders. I'd also like to give thanks to those that thoughtfully shared knowledge with me on this important topic. Through interviewers with catalogers and other librarians, we sought to understand the challenges faced by those who work in this area. We are really fortunate that OCLC works across the globe and we were able to engage people from a range of geographies because these are issues that are truly global. And you can refer to this blog post for more details. So no surprise, catalogers and other librarians are frustrated by their inability to appropriately represent indigenous people and topics related to indigenous people. They frequently see this as a choice between exerting control locally or leveraging collective library networks, but don't see a way to do both. And this isn't just about cataloging. Classification is also an issue. In some regions, this isn't just a matter of doing what's right, but doing what's required. Much of this work goes well beyond building technical capacity. Building engagement and then trust with communities is important for libraries who see themselves as in service to local communities. The work around confronting histories that include erasure and genocide is emotional and time consuming. We heard this over and over again. If you are new to this work, it will take more time than you may think. So both funding and high level support from administrators is necessary for work such as this to go forward. We asked in our interviews, have you seen evidence of harm? And catalogers may feel distant from this feedback. There may be no mechanism to report errors or offensive language in the catalog. 
And even if there is such a mechanism, catalogers don't think that they would be on the receiving end of these messages. Despite this, many interviewees did share stories of harm that was experienced primarily by community members who had to confront current descriptions. These interactions did not build trust with the community. In fact, as I'm sure you well know, they subtract from that trust. This is just one such story shared by a cataloger at a public library in Canada. We also heard that student employees provide an important voice. They will also speak up and say that the words being used are not right. Current cataloging systems and also what was described to us as cataloging culture were called out as particular barriers. The incentives with cataloging are perceived to be around throughput and developing efficient workflows. In addition, those who were engaged in shared cataloging endeavors face particular problems because of the need to arrive at a common way of doing things and achieving consensus, especially if this is not an area that is commonly acknowledged as a priority. We asked not only about problems, but also tapped into collective wisdom about potential solutions. These included a change in mindset, hiring more indigenous librarians, particularly into cataloging and metadata positions. But we were also really happy to hear from many of our interviewees who think that linked data is an important part of the solution. And this is exciting because OCLC has been investing in linked data for over a decade. And this ties to some pathbreaking work that Mary will touch on next. So back over to you, Mary. Thank you, Mary Lee. OCLC has a special privilege in stewarding WorldCat, which gives us a compelling interest in understanding how better to advance this important repair work and some standing, which makes us a natural convener. So I'm pleased to share that OCLC has been awarded a grant from the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation to convene a diverse group of experts, practitioners, and community members in order to examine and learn from their localized efforts and determine ways to improve practices, tools, infrastructure, and workflows at scale and at a community level. So in this project, OCLC will do th three things. The first is convene a conversation on how the community can address the systemic issues of bias and racial equity within our current collection description infrastructure. Secondly, We'll share this information with our member libraries and create the desire to build more inclusive and equitable library collections and provide description approaches which promote effective representation and discovery of previously neglected or mischaracterized people, events, and experiences. And finally, we want to develop a community agenda which will be of great value in clarifying issues for those who do knowledge work in libraries, archives, and museums. This agenda will help prioritize areas for attention and provide valuable guidance for those national agencies and suppliers who serve these communities. We believe that this is a significant landmark in repairing the bibliographic infrastructure that we all rely on. Now, with the few minutes we have left, I'd like to highlight some of the work OCLC is undertaking to further the library community's understanding and advance possible solutions. Today, the Dewey Decimal Classification is globally used by thousands of libraries, including academic, national, and public libraries around the world. And even though the DDC is always under continuous review and revision, bias is clearly still present. To accelerate our ability to address this bias, OCLC has established a new program that engages the broader community into helping revise Dewey. Librarians and specialists in specific areas are welcome to make edits to Dewey, working with our Dewey editors to follow the appropriate protocols. By doing this, we have now created a pathway for marginalized cultures to participate in defining how their topics are treated in the DDC. OCLC is also investigating ways to address the long-standing need to support alternative subject descriptors. One way to solve this problem 
is adding the appropriate authority files in WorldCAD. An example where we've done this is in our work with Tapuna, the National Library of New Zealand. We have worked with them to add their subject authority file for Maori to WorldCAD. This now gives catalogers the option to add Maori subjects to WorldCAT records to improve discovery and be respectful of the Maori population. Plus, it provides a template for the inclusion of indigenous knowledge when describing materials. Other groups around the world will be able to follow their example. Now, for Tapuna, this was a relatively simple problem to solve. But in an open system, especially one the size of WorldCAT, it is an extremely complex problem. As you can see here, we've made good progress, but this is not necessarily scalable if all potential authority files are to be added to WorldCAT. So as OCLC builds out our linked data infrastructure, we believe we will be able to more easily enable alternative subject descriptors by extending our growing linked data set that we're currently creating via what we call our Shared Entity Management Infrastructure Initiative. This will include a concept entity and build a concept graph, which will interconnect knowledge organization systems from multiple cultures, multiple time periods, and multiple languages. We are excited by the opportunity that this presents for the community and for future services. For example, with these new concepts in place, we can look at building out new capabilities to evaluate library collections based on subject headings and classifications linked to indigenous populations or social justice efforts. And we are currently evaluating the expansion of green glass to score collections based on selected BAS terms, the DDC, LC classification, or even some of these new concepts and compare the strengths and weaknesses in those collections to WorldCat and to selected peers. And ultimately, we envision that libraries will be able to develop collections that are more inclusive and representative of the populations they serve based on what they hold today in their collections. So Marilee and I would like to thank you for your time, and we hope you found this update informative. We look forward to continuing this conversation. Thank you.